Hi everyone, um, it's Sunday the 19th of April, just preparing to uh, talk to you about your third week of home learning beginning tomorrow um, and we can start exactly where we left off before Easter. Um, a quick update from me and I'm sure some of your parents already talked to you about um, some of the government's advice about what's going on with schools and things like this. Um, at the moment, um, there's still no date being given to uh, when schools are reopening. It's starting to look a little bit more promising, I think, in terms of us um, at some point seeing year six again as a whole. Um, but do you remember what I say, that from whatever happens, we will still get together whenever that might be and have a big party and a celebration all together when all this is over. Um, but for, the now, for now, for the time being, for at least the next few weeks, we'll still be doing our home learning um, as we've been doing so well so far. Um, and I've got a few changes to talk to you about today, I'm sure I'll talk about in a little while. But um, I'm missing you all very much. I hope the podcasts are keeping you very entertained. And um, I hope you're behaving at home and staying safe, following the protocols and following the rules. Um, and it's been so lovely um, to see everyone, everyone, everyone smiling and all the work that you've done so far. So thank you for everything for that. Um, a quick message for parents. Over the next few weeks, I'll be contacting you um, regarding some what we call parent consultation. Uh, we're going to be doing it uh, via a phone call. I'll be contacting you. Um, I'm looking to do about five or six people a week. Um, I'll be contacting you just to get some the best day and time where we'll have about a 10 or 15 minute conversation just about thinking forward and um, any targets and things that I could perhaps help you guys working with at home. I think you guys are turning into the experts now though because I've not seen your children in a working capacity for over a month so we'll need to be guided by you as well of what you've seen and we can work together to work out and thresh out some more things particularly with target time and things like that. So I'll be contacting parents over the next few weeks um, so don't worry if you don't hear from me for a couple of weeks. I'm looking by week three to get everybody um, spoken to and, and consulted with, so look out for an email from me there as well. So here we are everybody, um, back to week three. Um, we're going to have day 11 tomorrow, it's called day 11 because we've had two five day weeks of home learning so far. This is going to be day 11 starting tomorrow. I've been busy working over the weekend um, to try and get um, some nice changes and different things about how we're going to approach this week's learning and thinking of a good fun project for you to do as well. Um, so it's going to it's be some similar things that you've seen. It looks like the feedback I've been given and that I've spoken to a few of you is that it's been really good so far and it's been successful. I've had a few tweaks that I'm going to talk to you about now. So on, on the website I've uploaded um, all the documents you're going to need to start home learning from next week for, for Monday onwards. Um, and that will run through just like normal until you submit your work by 3.30 on Friday. So not too much has changed. Let me just go through with you now by giving you a virtual tour as to what's happened. So on the class web page just here, you'll see that I've got at the bottom our home learning grid. So I've adapted straight away. I've bought, I've completely... Um, got rid of the um, docu Word document. I've now gone just for the uh, grid. And it's all populated brand new with the work for this week, similar to what we've been doing so far. So it's all there and it's ready for you. Now, um, your My Maths this week is all to do with time and money. Time and money. So measurements, your focus for My Maths this week. Spelling frame and my maths are running exactly the same as last week or the week um, we finished in the second week of home learning so you've got your spelling words um, and rules for the week followed by a test and similar for my maths you've got a lesson to complete and a homework to have by the end now the writing challenge is going to be slightly different so maths and spelling frame very similar daily for that the writing challenge is slightly different because I was quite determined that I wanted to have something quite similar to, um, let's have a look, Mr. Earth, where's it gone? Uh, the document here. So you'll know that we've been doing talk for writing um, in class, and I thought that 
talking to the teachers over the few weeks here, I talked to about thinking, well, how can we make it a little bit more relevant to what it would be like in a classroom? Um, Pobble's been working really well, but I think when it, came, when it comes to the writing, some people have really struggled without having that structure um, like we've been doing in the class. So what I've created for you, well, this has been created by the uh, Pi Core Book Talk for Writing team. I've just edited it for us guys here. This is um, a two-week um, booklet. I've trimmed it down to one week for the first bit to not confuse you anyway. And it's all about Doors, the world of possibility. A year six workbook. So what you need to do, you need to look through and read carefully. It's on a PDF document, just like the Pubble one was. And this is where I put my part on it here, the introduction. Have you ever looked at a door and wondered what might be on the other side, where it may lead, what may be hiding within? At first glance, a door is just a piece of wood, glass or metal that is opened and closed so that people can get in and out of a room, a vehicle or a space. But in the hands of a writer, a door represents a world of possibility, a world where things are not only hidden, but often closed off and restricted. Together, through poetry, text games and narrative, we shall explore the potential that a door offers to you as the writer. So I've just talked about these are your tasks guys for week three of home learning and as they go through I'm going through in more detail each day what it has. It's got a date for you to complete it and it's similar it's got a one page on most of them. Activity one from tomorrow is called the world we live in. Tomorrow, uh, Tuesday activity two is slightly longer. Um, that's called I open the magical door and saw and you've got some games and different things you need to do from that. Wednesday three is a drawing challenge, artistic challenge about a door. Activity four is called idioms. I'll give you a bit more information what they mean. And activity five is the door. Now, at the bottom of the document, I put here what to submit. I would like you to submit two examples of work from this week to me by 3.30 on Friday. The reason I'm asking for two pieces is because there's not actually a long, long writing piece in here. It's you working with the text and doing activities from it. I'd like to submit for me activity two. I open the magical door and saw. And I'd like to submit to me activity five. And then you've got to do a performance. It's like um, performance poetry. Um, so either a video performance or there's some questions I'd like you to answer. If you're really a bit um, not, too, not too confident about doing a performance video, if you don't want to show me that, I'd like you to answer the questions for me there. So that's how it's going to be slightly different for talk for writing. Like I said, the reason being trying to replicate that more in class. It's hopefully going to be a similar structure, a daily activity. Um, and there, but please do familiarise yourself, you and your parents, have a look through the document and be really clear about what it means as well there. So as you can see, you've got activity one through to five, and just a reminder, well, you need to submit two and five to me by Friday. Now, your project, guys, your project this week is going to be geography themed, um, and it's all about your local area. I thought it'd be a great idea to get yourself out there in the local area. You make use of what you've got in your environment. So your challenge this week is I would like you to create your own map of your local area, perhaps your village or part of your town. You may need to go out onto your daily walk and research what landmarks are in your area or have a look through Google Maps to get a clear bird's eye view. I've created some links for you, some PowerPoints on the class page. Have a look. If I click on here, it's from Twinkle. You've got some different ones where you can go how to sketch maps and things like that. What can you see? There's a Google map. So you're going to do a bird's eye view for me. How to draw and, uh, and, and thinking about what titles and what things you need to have in there on your map. I've also attached for you how to use a key successfully. Most of you should be able to do this anyway. Um, using a key, there's one there of a supermarket shopping centre and how you could use a colour key to do that as well. So think about the landmarks that are in your, in your village. It could be the shops, it could be somebody's house, it could be the pub. Um, anything you think might be suitable to, to show and represent on a key. Um, thinks about there and how many symbols you can use. I was thinking as well, guys, that you could perhaps, for your art side of things, you could go for, um, where's that gone? There it is. I think for the art, it'd be really good if you create either a model, maybe, if you want for your cardboard sort of thing there, with detailed paintings, um, or labels, and how you could show the buildings and towns and lanes in your village. What I'd like you to do here, it says here, after you've created your map, try to describe a journey you've been on. 
Can you use compass directions? Um, could you perhaps measure it in a certain way that you want to do it? Um, so be prepared to show what you know when it comes to actually doing your own journey for that. An extra challenge down here, a third PowerPoint on the, um, on the class page called Grid References. And that's just involving you, who anyone who wants a challenge, to have a look through and how, we've seen these before actually when we've done some Atlas work, how you can look on the grids and you can identify through coordinates um, where the location of places are. I'd love to see if you could do that as an extra challenge. Um, so really guys, other than that, you're ready to go for week one from tomorrow. So you can start on your project for tomorrow and that's going to be really fun and cool. I'll send some more pictures out. I've got some ideas. If you'd like to have any more ideas for tomorrow, I think that'd be really good. Um, I've got some templates that you could use, some people that have done before. Um, but other than that, there you are for week one of home learning. Uh, week three, week one, week three, week one of the new term, because it's now summer term, isn't it? But week three, day 11 starts tomorrow on our home learning journey. Uh, anyway, that's a long video from me. I look forward to seeing the morning for our uh, morning podcast to explain a little bit more in detail about what day 11, Monday, the 20th of April, is looking like. Thank you again to all of you for all your bits that you've sent in. Any more shout outs, keep them coming my way. And let's see who can be the winners of the special awards this week. You're going to have a PE challenge coming out tomorrow from Mr. Coin as well. Quiz out on Thursday and lots of prizes as usual will be handed out on Friday as well. So I'll see you in the morning, guys. Um, have a great uh, evening um, and let's be ready and raring to go for tomorrow. It's flowers out. Bye bye.